all right so under question three which involves now the asymptotes so just a few things that i want you to understand under asymptotes very very fast so we have what we call the horizontal asymptotes okay and then we also have what we call the the vertical asymptotes very important right so what is the horizontal asymptote what's a vertical asymptote so i'm sure you've seen graphs the cases where you're going to have a line like this and then you find that the graph as it approaches that line it's not cutting it it's just getting closer and closer so this is called a vertical asymptote so that would be for example x is equal to 2 horizontal ones equally can give an example of certain radicals so you find that they won't cut that line like that. That's a horizontal asymptote. It's avoiding to cut that line. Now there's another a kind of an asymptote we call a slant or bleak uh, asymptote. This, this is this, this is not neither um, horizontal or vertical. Instead, it's something that slant. It can be something like that. And then you find that the graph maybe is like this. Okay, so. This is called a slant or oblique asymptote. So there are cases that define when this basically gets to occur. And that's what we need to understand as we answer these questions. So for the vertical asymptote, simple and straightforward, these ones occur when the denominator is equal to zero. In this case, one over x when x is zero. If you're going to have one over x plus two, or whatever denominator you're going to have, Whenever the denominator is going to be equal to zero, that is going to be a vertical asymptote. Right? Very important. Simple and straightforward. So vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is equal to zero. And then for for the horizontal. For the horizontal asymptote, there are two cases when they basically gets to occur. Two cases. The first case is where you're going to have the denominator being heavier than the numerator. So this is a normal fraction, x plus 1, for example, and then you've got x squared minus 1. You can see that the degree of the denominator is other than that of the, the numerator. So you focus on the highest degrees, okay? Irrespective of how big the polynomials you're dividing are, you focus on the highest ones. In this case, we've got x to the power 2 and x to the power 1. So the denominator is, as we can see, has got a higher degree compared to the numerator, right? So therefore, in this case, y is equal to 0 is going to be the horizontal asymptote. In every case, when the denominator has got a higher power. And then the second case is where they are equal. For example, you may have x, 2x squared minus x, and then 3x squared minus 1. Here you can see that the degrees are the same. So in this case, what you do is you get the coefficients, which are 2 over 3, 2 and 3, which are the coefficients of the highest degrees of both the numerator and the denominator. So this is the other case where you can find the horizontal asymptote. Now the other case for the slant, as you might guess, the only kind of a fraction we've not talked about is the case where you have an improper fraction. So an improper fraction, something like, I think this, this is a good example, x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. This is an example of an improper fraction. So in this case, what you do is basically you divide. You can use long division or synthetic division to help you get the quotient, the remainder. Okay. So in such a case, the quotient is what is going to be the equation of is what is going to be the equation of the asymptote. An example I'd give is if you're going to look at three x squared minus two x. If you know how to divide, if you've done your polynomials try to divide you see that you're going to get 3x minus 14 as your quotient and then of course plus 55 over x plus 4 in this case what you have here that is an equation of a slant asymptote to this fraction so these are the cases that you need to understand and this is a how that's a summary of how you handle there are different kinds of asymptotes and they help you sketch the graph easy and faster Starting with the first case, x plus 2 over x plus 3, 
This is a case where the degree is at the same. Of course, the simplest one is a vertical asymptote where the denominator is equal to zero. So equate our x plus three to zero, you find that x is equal to negative three. So what is your vertical asymptote? Simple and straightforward. For the horizontal asymptote, where you've got the same highest power, same degrees, we said you get the coefficient. So it's one and one. So therefore, horizontal asymptote is y is equal to one over one, which is a one. Pause the video, apply the concepts to find two. For the second one, we have x minus one over x squared plus one. So this is a normal fraction. We said, of course, equate the denominator to zero to find the vertical asymptote. So x squared is equal to negative one. So you notice that you can't find the square root of a negative number. So therefore, the vertical asymptote does not exist in this case. There is no case where the denominator can be equal to a zero because of the power two there. Yeah. So this is not possible, not possible to get a real number. So vertical asymptote does not exist. Now let's try to find the horizontal asymptote. We've got this a normal fraction, we've got and the denominator having a greater power, a greater degree compared to the numerator because this is two, that is the one. So we said there y is equal to zero becomes the horizontal asymptote. When you look at the third one, you have x squared plus one divided by x minus one. Now this is where I guess this is a case where you're able to divide, right? This is a case where you're able to divide. Let me add on to this as the last one. Let me answer the others. For the fourth one, you can see that the powers are the same. We have got five x squared plus eight x minus three, and then you have three x squared plus two. So there, what do we do? The vertical asymptote. How do you under vertical asymptote? The denominator equated to zero. So three x squared plus two is equal to zero you find that you have three x squared being got negative two and then of course you can't as well in this case find the square root of a negative number so we don't have a vertical asymptote in this case either how do you find the horizontal asymptote so we've got the same degrees x squared x squared so it's going to be five over three simple and straightforward so done if the first one the second one the fourth one this is also a division the last one we can undo it so we have x squared minus 3x plus 2 x to the power 3 minus 2x squared so first of all vertical asymptote equate the denominator to 0 so x to the power 3 how can you simplify this so I've got x to the power 3 minus that. How about if we factorize x squared? What are we going to remain with? We're going to remain with x minus 2. Equal to 0. So there are two possibilities. It's either x squared is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay. So which is the case actually? If you plug in 2 there, you'll notice that you're going to have 8 minus 8, which will be a 0. If plug in a zero as well, it will be a zero. So these are the two possible. These are the two vertical asymptotes. X is equal to zero, x is equal to two. So we, when you begin sketching this function, we don't expect it to cut the the part where x is zero, which is of course the y-axis, and then x is equal to two. So it should not cut these two lines. Buffer to means for the vertical asymptotes. Now for the horizontal ones. For the horizontal ones, what do we do? Horizontal observe x squared over x to the power 3. So the denominator has got a greater power. So in this case, y is equal to 0 is what? The horizontal asymptote. So therefore, y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0, by now you should understand that that's the x-axis. So this is the horizontal asymptote. And then we said for the vertical, it's x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. So you shouldn't cut these lines. So when you're sketching this graph, 
can be something that can it's possible it can be something like this and then it acts like this i'm just trying to guess i'm not sure it's going to come out but something like that okay so we've identified the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptote for the last one so we now have the two special cases that will now involve division so let's see how we can handle them okay so we are now on the case that now requires to divide so i hope you are you, you've learned long division if you are new to that just search long division translated institute on youtube for synthetic division so that you basically get to understand the two <laughs> however i'll explain here so how do you divide so we have x minus one and then we are dividing into x squared plus 1. So I'll introduce imaginary parts to ensure that the powers are reducing in this order they are supposed to. So 0x is imaginary and then we have a constant 1. So you can see we have 2, 1 and x to the power 0. So that's what we want. So let's try to divide now. So we we'll divide by our x. x into x squared is going to be x. Now multiply that x with whatever is on the left, whatever we are dividing with. So you are going to end up with x squared minus x. And then we we'll subtract this we'll cancel and then remain with 0x minus x. That will be positive x. Divide by positive x again you are going to have a 1. And then you we'll multiply the 1 with whatever is here. You are going to have x minus 1. And then we've got a negative there. You can drop the 1. So x minus x is 0. 1 minus 1, that's going to be a plus 2. Because of this negative. Okay? So therefore, what we have is, we have, the quotient is x plus 1. The remainder is 2 over the divisor, which is x minus 1. So therefore, what has this told us? So this tells us this is what we have here, the quotient, is the equation of the slant asymptote. Okay, that's a linear, that's an, a line. And then, of course, the vertical asymptote is still going to be found in the same way by equating the denominator to zero. So we find that x is equal to one for the vertical asymptote. Simple and straightforward, right? Feel free to pause the video and try out uh, the last one, 5. So I have x squared minus 3 over 3x three plus 4. Feel free to pause the video and try this one out. How are we going to divide it? So we apply the same concepts. Okay. You divide. So we have 3x three plus 4. And then we're dividing into x squared minus 3. So you can see here we've got an issue dividing 3x into x squared already. Let's try to apply synthetic division. <coughs> Synthet synthetic division requires us that we find the value of x by equating that whatever we're dividing with to 0. So 3x is got negative 4 and then x becomes negative 4 over 3. So we'll use that. That's negative 4 over 3 and then we'll divide it into the the coefficients or whatever we have. So we have x squared minus 3. So I'll introduce the imaginary parts. So we have 0x and then minus a 3. So the coefficients that we have there are 1, 0, and negative 3. So 1, 0, and negative 3. Well, how do you go about it? So first of all, drop the first coefficient and then multiply by that. So that would be negative 4 over 3. Add with a 0 to be negative 4 over 3. Multiply by negative 4 over 3 again to be 16 over 9. Now there what you have is negative 3 plus 16 over 9. So 16 over 9 in other terms. 16 over 9 minus 3. Common denominator 9, 16 minus 9 times 3 is 27. So that's going to be a 4 plus a 7, 11. So that should be negative 11 over 9. So negative 11 over 9. Hope pre allocations are okay. So remember here what we had is x squared as the highest power. 
so your answers reduce okay the last part is the remainder so therefore you have x x minus 4 over 3 as if as a factor as your quotient and then plus the remainder negative 11 over 9 divided by the divisor so therefore this is a slant asymptote then for the vertical asymptote has usually equated the denominator to zero so 3x plus 4 equated to zero you have 3x being equal to negative 4 so x becomes negative 4 over 3 that's your vertical asymptote so that's how you handle question 3 with positivity confidence